Hello everybody, and today we're going to be playing The Wisdom Slash Madness of Crowds. Play time, playing time 30 minutes, okay. Um, this is made by the same dudes who made the last two games I played. Um, the Evolution of Trust and We, we Become What We Behold. Now I want to check it out. Let's play. Sir Isaac Newton was pretty sure he was a smart cookie. I mean, after inventing calculus and a th the a theory of gravity, he should be clever enough to do some financial investing, right? Anyway, long story short, he lost $4.6 million in today's dollars. The nationwide speculation frenzy known as the South Sea Bubble of 1720. As Mr. Newton later said, I can calculate the motion of heavenly bodies, but not the madness of people. Yeah, sucks for him. Of course, that's not the only time markets, institutions, or entire democracies went haywire. The madness of crowds, and yet, just when you lose hope in humanity, you see citizens coordinating to rescue each other in hurricanes, communicating communi communities, creating solutions to problems, people fighting for a better world, the wisdom of crowds. But why do some crowds turn into ma turn to madness or wisdom? No theory can explain everything, but I think a few fields of st field of a new field of stud of study, network science can guide us. And its core idea is this: to understand crowds, we should look not at the individual people, but at their connections. Draw a network. Each connection repeats a friendship between two people. Draw to connect. Draw t scratch to connect. Disconnect. Oh, cool! When you're done doodling and playing around, let's continue. Okay. So I could, like, do this. Make everybody friends! Said make everyone friends. Oh gosh, that looks like a pentagram. Anyway, let's continue. Now, social connections are for more than just making pretty pictures. People look to their social connections to understand their world. For example, people look to their peers to find out what percent of their friends, not counting themselves, are, say, binge drinkers. Draw slash erase connections to see what happens. Okay, so I'm pretty sure... So I was playing this to see if the recording went well, and, uh... I think the percentage means what percent of their friends are, the, say, the binge drinkers, or what percent. So, now 100% of your friends are binge drinkers, and now 100% of your friends are binge drinkers. If I do that, and do this. Oh. So do that. Okay, so cool. Cool, got it. However, networks can fool people, just like how the Earth seems flat because we're on it. People may get wrong ideas about society because they're in it. A quick response to James Sarwaki's The Wisdom of Crowds. Optional extra bonus notes, links, and references. Okay. For example, a 1991 study showed that virtually all college students reported that their friends drank more than they did. But that seems impossible. How can that be? Well, you're about to invent the answer yourself by drawing a network. It's time to fool everyone. Puzzle time. Fool everyone into thinking the majority of their friends' 50% threshold are binge drinkers, even though binge drinkers are outnumbered 2 to 1. Okay. So everyone. So 50% or more percent. Okay, so now 100% of your friends. 100% of your friends. 100% of your friends. Boom. Boom. Actually, I won't do it with you. Boom. 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 Six people. But then if we do you two, then, then do that, and then that. Oh. Huh? Oh, I got it. Yay! Okay. Congrats, you manipulated a group of students into believing in the prevalence of an incredibly unhealthy social norm. Good going. Uh, thanks? Okay. What you just created it is the called the majority illusion, which also explains why people think their political views are consensus, or why extremism seems more common than it actually is. Madness. What other kinds of connections are there? But people don't just 
uh, passively observe others' ideas and uh, behaviors, they actually copy them. So now let's look at something network scientists call contagions. I mispronounced that a lot in my other playthrough. Let's put aside the threshold thing for now. Below we have a person with some information, some misinformation, fake news, as the cool kids say. And every day that person spreads the rumor like a virus to their friends, and they spread it it to their friends and so on. Start the simulation. P.S. You can't draw while the sim's running, okay? Sweet! Okay, note. Oh. Note, despite the negative name, contagions can be good or bad, or neutral, or ambiguous. There's a strong statistical e evidence that smoking, health, happiness, voting patterns, and cooperation levels are all contagious, and even some evidence that suicides and mass shootings are too. Well, that's depressing. Indeed it is anyway. Puzzle time! Draw a network and run the simulation so that everyone gets infected with the contagion. New rule, you can't cut the thick connections. Okay. Do that. I don't have to do that, I can just like, do this I think. <laughs> Everyone's friends! Boom. Yay! Reset or redraw? No. Fan flippin' tastic. This madness spreading is called an information cascade. Mr. Newton fell for such a cascade in 1720. The world's financial institution fell for such a cascade in 2008. However, this simulation is wrong. Most ideas can't spread like viruses for many beliefs and behaviors. You need to be exposed to the contagion more than just once in order to be infected. So network scientists have come up with a new, better way to describe how ideas slash behaviors spread, and they call it complex contagions. Let's bring back the thresholds and the binge drinking example. When you played with this the first time, people didn't change their behavior. Now let's simulate what happens if people start drinking when 50% of their friends do before you start the sim, ask yourself what you think should happen. Now run the sim and see what actually happens. Okay, so this guy is 50% of his friends are binge drinkers. I'm not sure actually, uh... Yeah, cause, well over 50% of his friends would be binge drinkers. Does it have to be direct connections? That would make sense. So start simulating. Oh, this guy's stuck. Unlike our earlier fake news contagion, this contagion does not spread to everyone. The first few people get infected because although they're only exposed to one binge drinker, that binge drinker is 50% of their friends. Yeah, they're lonely. In contrast, the person near the end of the chain did not get infected because while they were exposed to binge drinking fr and friend, they did not pass the 50% threshold. Yeah, they passed 33% threshold. The relative equals of uh, infected friends matters. That's not that's the difference between the complex contagion theory. My headphone broke. Okay, there we go, I fixed it. <laughs> difference between complex contagion theory and our naive it spreads like a virus. Simple contagion theory. You could say simple contagions are just contagions with a, a more than 0% infection threshold. However, contagions are nece aren't necessarily bad, so enough about crowd madness. What about crowd wisdom? Hold on, I want to try to get everyone, now that I understand this, so... If I do that, that's 50%. And then if I do that... Ah, oh, crap, that's 30%. If I do that... Uh-oh. That should do it. What if I did that as well? Yeah, okay. And then... Boom! Okay, start simulation. I did it! Sweet! Okay, crowd wisdom. Here we have a person who volunteers to, I don't know, rescue people in hurricanes or tutor underprivileged kids in their local community or something cool like that. Point is, it's good. Complex X contagion. This time, though, let's say the threshold is only 25%. People are willing to volunteer, but only if 25% or more of their friends are do so. Oh, two. 
Hey, Goodwill needs a bit of social encouragement. Get everyone infected with the good vibes. Oh, okay. Cut! 100%. Do that. Then boom. And then boom. Yay! No, volunteering is just one of the many complex contagions. Others include voter turnout, lifestyle habits, challenging your beliefs, taking time to understand an issue deeply, anything that needs more than one exposure. Complex contagions aren't necessarily wise, but being wise is a complex contagion. So what? It's a real-life simple contagion, usually bits of trivia, like the possum um, has... 13 nipple. What? <laughs> what other kinds of contagions are there? <laughs> now to really show the power and weirdness of complex contagions, let's revisit an earlier puzzle. Okay. Remember, this, this, this time with a complex contagion, it would be a bit tougher. Try to infect everyone with complex wisdom. Start simulation. Feel free to, feel free to just hit start and try as many simulations as you want. Okay. Yes. Oh! Okay, so... Do that. Then do... That. And then do that. Ah, crap. Started erasing. Boom. What? Oh. Two. Yay! Hot dang! Now you may think that you just need to keep adding connections to spread any contagion, complex or simple, good or bad, wise or mad. But is that really so? Well, let's revisit another earlier puzzle. If you hit start below the complex contagion, it will just spread to everyone. No surprise there, but now let's do the opposite of everything we've done before. Draw a network to prevent the contagion from spreading to everywhere. Okay. Boom. And I messed up. Uh, if I make everyone friends with each other, then they won't, there won't be, like, the right amount of people. Ooh, I should do that, yeah. Oh, boom! I just got the threshold immediately! <laughs> You see, while more connections will always help the spread of simple ideas, more connections can hurt the spread of complex ideas. It makes you wonder about the internet. Hmm. And this isn't just a theoretical problem. This can be a matter of life. Or death. The, the people at NASA were smart cookies. I mean, they did, used Newton's theory to get us to the moon. Anyway, long story short, in 1986, despite warnings from the engineer, they launched the Challenger, which blew up and killed seven people. The immediate cause, it was too cold that morning. The less immediate cause, the managers ignored the engineer's warnings. Why? Because the group think when a couple, when a group is too closely knit, as they tend to be at the top of institutions, they become resistant to complex ideas that challenge their beliefs or ego. So that's how institutions can fall to crowd madness, but how can we design for crowd wisdom in short two words? Bonding and bridging. Oh, I can't draw here, okay. Too few connections and any ideas can't spread. And any 
I and an idea can't spread. Too many connections and you get group think. Draw connect draw a group that hits the sweet spot. Just connect act enough to spread a complex idea. Oh, redraw, can I <laughs> Boom. Yay! <laughs> Simple enough, the number of connections within a group is called bonding social capital, but what about the connections between groups? As you may have already guessed, the number of connections between groups is called bridging social capital. This is important because it helps groups think a break out of their insular echo chambers. Build a bridge to infect everyone with complex wisdom. Okay, so what? Boom! Yay! Like bonding, there's a sweet spot for bridging, too. Extra challenge, try drawing a bridge so thick that the complex contagion can't pass through it. It, now that we know how to design connections within the between groups, let's do both at the same time. Wait, what? Try drawing a bridge so thick that the complex contagion can't pass through it? Uh-oh. No. I ruined some things. Don't do that. Um, all these guys are connected, so whatever. Do both at the same time. Final puzzle draw connections within groups, bonding and between groups, bridging to spread wisdom to the whole crowd. Between group bonding and between groups bridging. Okay. Okay, so. Okay, so, do this. Nope. Okay, I want to connect to you. Then I want to connect to you. Then you. Oh gosh, it was slowing. Okay. We want you guys as well, so we're gonna do that. Yay! Congrats, you've just drawn a very special kind of network. Networks with the right mix of bonding and bridging are profoundly important, and they're called small world networks. Okay. Unity without informity, diversity without division, e plurb erbus unum out of many, one, no matter how it's fa phrased, people across time and cultures often arrive at the same piece of wisdom. A healthy society needs a sweet spot of bonds within groups and the bridges between groups that is not this because ideas can't spread. Yeah. Nor this, because you'll get groupthink. But this. Oh. Cool. Network scientists now have a mathematical definition for this ancient wisdom, the small world network. This optimal mix of bonding bridges describes how our neurons are connected, fosters collective creativity, and problem solving, and even once helped U.S. President John F. Kennedy barely avoided nuclear war. So yeah, small worlds are a big deal. Okay, let's wrap this up.
no conclusion, it's all about- no conclusion, it's all about contagions and connections. Wait, can I draw? I can, okay. Contagions like how neurons pass signals in a brain, people pass beliefs and behaviors in a society. Not only do we influence our friends, we also influence our friends' friends, and even our friends' friends' friends. <laughs> be the change you want to be the change you want to see in the world, etc., etc. But like neurons, it's not just signals that matter; it's also connections. Too few connections, and complex ideas can't spread too many connections, and complex ideas c get crushed by groupthink. The trick is to build a small world network, the optimal mix of bonding and bridging, a uh, pluribus unum. Wanna make your own solution? Check out Sandbox Mode by clicking the star button below. Okay. So what about the question from the very beginning? Why do some crowds turn to wisdom or madness? Inner madness. From Newton to NASA to network science, we've covered a lot here today. Long story short, the madness of crowds not is not sincerely necessarily due to the individual people, but due to the, how we're trapped in a, a network sticky web. That does not mean abandoning personal responsibility, for we're also the weavers of that web. So improve your contagions, be skeptical of ideas that flatter you, spend the time understanding complex ideas, and improve your connections, bonds with similar folk bond with similar folks but folk but also bridge build bridges across cultural slash political divides we can weave a wise web sure it's harder than doodling lines on a screen but so oh so but so so worth it the great triumphs and tragedies of history are caused not by people being fundamentally good or fundamentally bad at ed, but by people being fundamentally a people. Neil G. Mann and Terry P Pratchett. Oh. Oh, cool! Oh, sweet! Created by Nikki Case. Great transporters. One more. Sandbox mode. Bonus box. Bonus boxes, links and references, trans What's sandbox mode like? Tasian. Oh gosh, complex, simple. Okay, contagions in color, yellow, blue. What's green? That's cool. That's very cool. Draw network, add person, add infected, drag person. Delete person. Clear all. <laughs> or use keyboard shortcuts. One add person, two add infected, space drag, space backspace delete. Psst. Wanna know a secret? No. Okay. Thank you all so much for watching. That was really fun. You can go check out sandbox mode if you want. You can if you go to the website, you can just skip to sandbox mode. But yeah, that's really cool. Um, go check this out. Um, that was really fun. That told us a lot about... I don't know. That's fun. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. Subscribe, ring, hit the like button, ring the notification bell icon so you get notified on the next video, and goodbye.